Welcome back. Happy New Year. The guys are back together again. Yes, yes. Uh, 2024. 2023 was long, man. It was, I think, crazy. It also disappeared, though. It, once you make it through the other side. Yeah. But just thinking, we were, we were talking about, you know, the episode that we're shooting and kind of thinking about everything that happened last year. And it's like, oh, wait, that was last year? Yeah. yeah. Like, I didn't even remember. Like, it, was, it seemed like it was just, like, forever. It just all blends. It all blends. But, but here we are, and we're back, uh, the three amigos, to bring you a recap. Uh, first and foremost, allow us to introduce ourselves. My name is Perry. Okay, I'm Ben. <laughs> and I'm Rashawn. And we make up the Rich Check podcast. Uh, tonight, we're going to talk about, uh, we're going to do a recap. Yes. 2023. Yes. Best of, worst of, favorites, the whole bang. What yes. we're looking forward to. What we're, looking, what we're looking forward to this year. Uh, we'll have some fun talking about a lot of things. Mm-hmm. Um, I think this is episode 72. Oof. Ooh. We're getting up there. We're getting up there. This is season 11. Yes. Uh, we got some surprises in store for you all this season. Some, uh, some, some, some really good places that we're going to visit, people we're going to meet, uh, some incredible, incredible guests. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's going to be a fun one. It's going to be a good ride. Uh, as is tradition, we obviously have to uh, have our honorary wrist check. Yes, yes. Uh, I'm going to start with Ben this go around. The man sitting in a new seat. Yep. What do you got on today? <laughs> seat. So I'm wearing, it is a Rolex. It's not my Daytona, as everyone's been used to hearing for the past couple, I don't know, probably half the year. It's very pretty. Yes. It is very pretty. It's a 1978 uh, Rolex GMT. Woo! Reference 1675 with an Hot amazing, fire. amazing patina on the bezel. Yeah, the bezel and is awesome. Perfect dial. It's a little loosey goosey on me because it's borrowed, but it's okay. Yeah, that's my nice favorite part. Nice little jingle jangle. I love the ASMR jingle jangle. For everybody out there, um, it is not on the Jubilee bracelet though. A little unfortunate, but mm, so that no is, it's it's. I mean, some would argue it's the way that it's supposed to be. Keeping Perry proud. I think you two argue that. Yeah, it definitely it's belongs okay. on oyster bracelet. It's good. It feels good. Those Jubilee is for jewelry. Are, that's not true. It's a good bar. <laughs> that's not true. No, but it's a beautiful piece. Yeah, it's good. Uh, shouts out to the owner. Yeah, shout out to Paul. Uh, in the room. It's an incredible watch. Uh, one of my favorites. It's a classic. Mm-hmm. Um, I recently picked up a new Pepsi. I don't think I've worn it on the show yet. You haven't? You no. It. I spit spoil it. Mm-hmm. Well, by the time you see this, uh, maybe I'll share some pictures online. Uh, I'm wearing a watch I haven't worn in a long time. Not a new watch. It's an old watch. Mm-hmm. Uh, but a watch that means a lot to me. I'm wearing my vintage Tudor. Yes. Big Rose. Yes. On the lizard strap. On the lizard strap. Yes. Gilt dial, gold indices, roulette date wheel. Yeah. What's not to love? With the Cyclops on it, too. With the Cyclops, Woo! 34 millimeter on the smaller side. Yes. Uh, but still, still wears handsomely on the wrist. Yeah. Uh, this is a watch that was a gift to me from my wife. Several Christmases ago. Shout out to Perry's wife. First shout out, yeah, she'll, year. She, yeah, she'll like that. First shout out. <laughs> of the um, year. Manual wound. Yes. Watch. Uh, so if, if it's on the wrong date, I actually have to like, you got to do that thing where you go to nine and go back to 12 yeah. to kind of like yeah, flip through the, them if you, you want to. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, hack. That's the, uh, the quick set hack. Uh, but man, I love this thing. It's a, it's, a, it's a very handsome watch. Makes me feel like a gentleman. Mm-hmm. Every time I wear it, yeah, can't get enough of it. Works with the fit too. Yeah, you yeah. So that was intentional. Very <laughs> inten- I, I, yes, yes. You know, at Wrist Check Pod, we like to get fresh. Yeah, <laughs> yes, that uh, is true. It's definitely just as much about aesthetics and fashion as it is watches. Yes, uh, but that's what makes it fun. That's what makes it fun. Mm-hmm. Um, this is a good piece. What do you got in the wrist, sir? Oh, I see something familiar. Yeah, yes. it looks like you repeated a watch again. Yes. <laughs> I am repeating a watch. Um, obviously, Tristan's going to be very disappointed. He is, <laughs> yes. Tristan and his wife are going to be very disappointed. Sorry, Tristan. Um, but I am rocking the usual suspect, 5726 Paddock. Um, you know, this is a watch that um, I did acquire last year. Um, very, very special to me. Um, has Holds a lot of sentiment, right? Because... Um, this was something that fell into my lap unintentionally, but when it came to me, it was like, well, how, how do I say no? Yeah. Um, yeah. Who says no? <laughs> to a, a pat, 
protect the league Nautilus. Um, I mean, I've loved and appreciated this watch. It's got some battle scars. Um, and <clears throat> of course, the first, the first few scratches on the on the piece, you're kind of like you have that cringing moment. Um, that's what makes it yours, though. But that's what makes it yours. Um, you got that shark skin strap. It's bulletproof. Exactly. There we go. Um, shark skin um, strap on it, custom, courtesy of Jean Rousseau. Um, very, very distinct. It's one of those that, like, you know, when you see it, you're like, oh, what is that? You're like, shark skin, shark skin baby. <laughs> <laughs> um, and so, you know, I wear this watch with a lot of pride. Um, very appreciative to have this in my collection and, you know, looking to uh, carry it into 2024. So I got a question for you. Talk because to <laughs> I, I know I was uh, fortunate enough to borrow a friend's Aquanaut for maybe about a two month period. And Aquanaut is very dangerous because it's very easy to wear. Mm -hmm. It's hard to wear anything else. Yes. But I would find myself like forcing uh, myself to still switch watches out because I own so many. And this is getting a lot of wrist time. It does, <laughs> yeah, a lot more than. So how do you feel about owning as many watches as you do now if you're wearing this five, maybe six days a week? Yeah. Um, okay, so how I, so how I don't create the conviction, right? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so how I don't create the conviction is, I actually do switch out watches throughout the day. Yeah, when you home. Oh, you switch out multiple. Watches I do the day. switch out multiple watches. So I've never seen you out in a different watch since you've had that watch. Yeah, I don't think so. Out, either. out, out you yes, don't wear out. A watch. It, this is this is the showpiece. This is the one that I like to wear. So it's safe to say the rest of the watches are just. They're house watches yeah. now. Well, you know, <laughs> so so it's funny because like I'll wear like the Tudor or I'll wear like the UN um, for kind of like vacation or um, kind of like those running errand days. So like if I'm doing my like Sunday, like, you know, target dates with Mary, um, shout out to my wife and um, those kind of things where, you know, you want to be a little bit under the radar, yeah. right? I'll wear those, especially because um, they are on. Um, I would love to see you rocking a Nautilus and Target. <laughs> that that would be crazy. It'd, It'd be, be too crazy. Just reaching for the milk, <laughs> and they're like, "What's that?" Yeah, but um, you know, that was, that it's it's the other day. <laughs> it's very low key. It's very low key. It's on like you know these like nylon or like you know repurposed straps. Um, they're very comfortable and, you know, you can just casually wear them and not really have that. Um, it always just fits. I feel you. You know? I feel you. Where the padded can sometimes be out of place. Sure. Um, so, you know, when you do mention, you know, going to Target, I mean, like, it'd be pretty crazy to just, like, do casual, you know, errand shopping and, and like, wearing a padding. I mean, some people might get a rise out of that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, we, we want to protect. We're going to tell you not to do something. It's very true. <laughs> I'm walking to Target to protect on. You're not going to tell me I look crazy. No. Very true. Yeah. All right. Well, speaking of uh, casually worn sports watches, <laughs> uh, Audemars Piguet released a new watch that we hadn't had the opportunity to talk about. Yes. There's been a lot of conversation about it in the bungalow. Mm -hmm. Shout out to uh, the guys and gals in the bungalow. Yes, sir. Uh, but they released the Travis Scott uh, Perpetual Calendar uh, Royal Oak. Yes. On a in, in, in a brown ceramic case, mm, no open less. Open work too. Open yes. work. Yes. On a brown denim strap. Yes. First thoughts. Okay, so <laughs> I like the watch. Okay. I really, really do. Um, it matches the DNA of AP, of course, being very, very tight knit with pop culture, right? Sure. And of course aligning themselves with the biggest stars in, you know, entertainment, whether that's, you know, music, athletics, um, you know, pop culture, any kind of like social figures, I think like they hit it on the nail, especially to go with Travis. I think that was like the, um, the perfect like brand ambassador for it. Um, where I have a little bit of a conflict is the fact that the watch is like too, like it's like it's almost pushing too much for it to be like a Travis watch. Like it doesn't need to be like 
highlighted it's like Travis is Travis is yeah. Travis like you know open work AP ceramic like you did a brown like you know ceramic case like that's dope yeah, it is you know what I mean like the same as like when they did um the piece the piece unique for like um you know um a couple of other stars right um well, like Ed Sheeran it, you take someone unique. like Ed Sheeran right where like the open work, it didn't specifically have like any of his branding. There was a bit of like the colorways of like his albums and like the so I the think like, weight and yeah. those kind of things. I understand your your point because I think like I like the watch too. I think the watch is really cool. My biggest issue with the watch was that it says Cactus Jack. Yeah, I have that. exactly. So yes, those, those are my yes. beefs with it too. Like I think aesthetically the watch is cool. I think the collaboration makes total sense, especially being Francois send off. Yeah. I would have designed it a little differently. Yes, like you have the you have Travis's font on the numbers already. Perfect. Yeah. The rotor says Cactus Jack. Yes. Fine. It's yes. on the back of the watch. Cactus Jack on the sub dial. Yeah, I know. Yeah, <laughs> it just get yeah. out of here. Also, you have it made logo, it a little too kitschy. You have his logo on the moon face too. Which exactly. Is a nice little quirky touch. Yeah, Some people I might thought think that was great. Much. I think that's good. I thought it was fine. That's perfect branding. Doesn't need to say Cactus Jack visibly anywhere on the Ye dial. Agree. And also, it makes it look weird because, like, what the fuck is it pointing at? Yeah, I don't get it. You can't tell. No. Yeah. Yeah, it was a little strange. Um, also, the strap. The strap is fire. That keeper with all the Cactus Jack, Travis yep. Scott thing on it, that's got to go. Well, it also didn't, it didn't, it felt out of place because the keep, the, uh, not only the keeper, but the, the clasp was like rose gold. Yeah. It just doesn't, like, I don't know. It was, it was a little strange. It would have been cool to have, like, just a brown ceramic clasp. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, just for yeah, some like continuity. They do it, the bracelet, they do it all they do it the time, the but I get it. Listen, also, maybe price uh, point. Uh, the, the price point is wild. Great, two hundred and one thousand dollars. Too crazy. What is the extra thousand and, for? And to be fair, <laughs> it's also not that limited. Like they made no, they're doing two hundred units. Yeah, like, obviously over the course of time, yeah. but there'll be two hundred units available. There, you have to think there has to be less all black or all blue surrounding. I mean, they're allocating a, a, a huge. You yeah. know, poor chunk those of their, cost less their production to that bracelets. watch. Yeah. Yes, that doesn't make sense. Um, but overwhelmingly, it seems like the reception of this piece is positive. Yeah, um, it is a hype watch. Yes, uh, AP is in a space where they are really hyped up. Mm -hmm. um, and I, what I really did appreciate though, because there's been a lot of debate about uh, the future of AP and and where they're going as a company. And I was talking to someone just the other day uh, who walked into an AP boutique and, you know, they were talking about Francois departing. And I think there was a comment sort of like, you know, maybe we can get back to our roots. Mm. And I think that's some of like the feedback that I, I, I'm not enjoying. Yes. Is that there's somehow this relation with Travis Scott sort of cheapens the brand. And, and the, the reason why I, I, I wanted to mention that is because, so, friend of the pod, shout out to Ben Clymer. We can say that now. Yeah, yes. Fact. <laughs> <laughs> Flex. Uh, but he just did an interview with Francois, which yes. I thought was, was fantastic. One of the best talking watches. And it was really, really good. And, and one of the things that I took from it, you know, because Francois had been with the company for like, I mean, something like 30 years. Yes. They were not selling watches before Francois. <laughs> mm, they were not. So what are you going back to? Yeah. Yeah. You're going back to a brand that no one cared about? They couldn't sell Royal Oaks. They couldn't. No. As a matter of fact, he even talked about they considered discontinuing the Jumbo. Yes. Well, John John got a Royal Oak at a discount. Crazy. Well, John John got a blue dial Jumbo at a discount. Wild. Yes. And it, I love the fact that, you know, they spoke to both like you know mr Biver and they also spoke to you know francois and their um reactions to ap was that the brand was nothing yeah it wasn't it it was it was nothing and in the interview he talks about he's like i don't know how i'm gonna sell this brand <laughs> <laughs> he was yes. going up to authorized deals and begging them, please please take a watch he said if they, if they sold what something like three or four watches in a month incredible yes you know, yes. now they can't keep them stocked. Yes. So, you know, I think, I, obviously I get it. I think a lot of the frustration is caused by watches not being available now that they're in demand. Yes. But I think, uh, you know, if, if there's anything that, you know, is sort of 
the the thing to take away from this Travis Scott release, it is Francois's contribution to the watch industry and to Audemars Piguet. Yes. And I think it was, you know, whether you love the watch or not, it was the perfect send off for someone that had a vision to marry hot horology mm -hmm. with popular culture. Yes. And to leave releasing a watch mm -hmm. with one of the biggest pop stars in the world. Yes. And just it, that's it, it, crazy expensive. Yes. I think it's, you know, listed now in the secondary market for like four hundred and fifty thousand dollars. It's like insane. Nuts. Right. And he literally did a mic drop at the event. And it's just like, you know what, my man? Salute, Salute. you. Yes. Salute. One thing that I found to be very, very interesting, right? When they um, you know, when they talked about in the Talking Watches um interview when they spoke about um Arnold Schwarzenegger not wanting to be a part of AP unless you brought in Muhammad Ali. Yeah, I thought that was awesome. Which was like so weird because you would say like Arnold wanting Muhammad Ali to be involved, right? When Muhammad, of course, is like, you know, especially throughout his career, he's been um, a bit of someone that people just like, you either love him or you hate him. For a while, he was a controversial figure. Very, very controversial. And so when, you know, Francois took this leap of faith to go ahead and say, listen, you know what? I'm actually going to put these two stars together. It, it laid down the blueprint and the foundation for what AP would become in the future. So why not have Travis? Of course. And for those that aren't familiar with the history and the DNA of what um, AP has built, I think people should probably do a little bit more homework. Yeah, I think they should. Listen, now, if you want to have a conversation about all these Marvel releases, <laughs> that's a whole nother yeah. topic. I would, I would love to have Francois sitting on the couch with us so we could get into that and, and discover what the motivation might have been internally about that. But, uh, you know, speaking about the, the Arnold Schwarzenegger and Muhammad Ali uh, situation, I mean, just, you know, to, to understand the value that exists there yes. uh, with these two guys from different backgrounds, different fields of work, but understanding that these are still two pop cultural icons. Yes. Heavyweights. Yes. Right? And it worked. It worked. Yeah, I mean, it worked. Look what he did with Jay Z too. Exactly. Right? Same Jay, thing. Jay, Muhammad, Arnold, Serena. All LeBron. of this laid yeah. down the 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 foundation uh, for Travis Scott yes. to be able to do this. And this is sort of like the summit of, of all of that. I don't know if they haven't had a bigger artist than Travis Scott no. to do something like this with. Mm -mm. Uh, this is their biggest moment in terms of like uh, brand ambassadorship and uh, a collaboration. And I don't think that this is, this is, I mean, so this could also be, you know, one of those moments where it's setting a blueprint for the future and what's to come from AP. Um, who knows what we'll get in the future. Agreed. Um, moving along, we've got a lot of things to talk about in terms of what happened last year. Yes. Uh, so let's start with something personal. Your favorite watch purchase of 2023. Yes. So this is a purchase that you made. Um, you look like you need some time to think about it because you've been wearing that watch for the better part of a year and a half. You feel yes. Like, no, you know, <laughs> so yes. I'm going to start with you. I think I know what your answer is, but I don't think you do know. It's a, okay. It's a All right. Doozy. Okay. Let's go. So it's going to come as a surprise, but uh, I want to say maybe right after we had Tristan on the show, I was pretty inspired. And I was, I mean, in the, the website, our little blog section, we'll, we'll hear about this soon too. Okay. Because I actually wrote something about it. Nice. We're going to publish. But Tristan pretty much inspired me to, to do this. So before the year ended, I bought a tank of Basculant. Oh, wow. okay. Congratulations. I haven't busted it out yet. It's yeah. It's sitting at home. It's in its box. It's full kit, steel, uh, mechanic, of course. Yeah. Gotta yeah. have that. And he actually helped me come up with an engraving for it. Oh, that's awesome. So I'm going to get it engraved in my handwriting, then I'll bust it out. So I'm waiting for that to happen. But that's been my favorite purchase of the year. Mm -hmm. 
just because it was it was the first time where I was like inspired to buy something because of someone else. Yeah, mm-hmm. oh, that's and, awesome. And it being Tristan too is a little special because I mean, ever since we met Tristan, I mean, me and him got pretty tight. Yeah, no, so he's a great dude. Nice I love to feel Tristan. Like a like a, a friend almost. Like I feel like that's like our watch. Even that's though it's tight. My watch. Yeah, that's dope. Especially since he came up with a pretty cool engraving idea. So when when that man, I might need to consult else. him for some engravings. <laughs> uh, do you know one yet? I can go. I do. Okay. Um, All right. Let's hear it. I have to go with um, the Uli Snart in Nerona. Okay, the Target watch. <laughs> <laughs> you, <laughs> you guys, you guys don't like the piece. <laughs> Listen, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, not like, I, I don't yeah, hate I don't it. Hate it. Yeah. I, I just, I just, I, I love Uli Snart. It was, a yes. bit, it was a bit surprising that you. It wanted was very that. surprising, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> to say the least. Yes. Um, I think it was one of my most surprising pieces, um, and I fell in love with it because um, it was a piece that, you know, at one point I was considering to consign, um, and I spoke to um, the the owner first, and I said, hey, man, like, you know, um, I'd be more than happy to help you part with this piece, um, but it was... There was something in it, right, where I said, ah, it's got my, my lucky number, number 12. It's of 29 pieces. It's a very, very small bunch, right? So, I mean, out of 9 billion people on, you know, God's green earth, um, only 29 people own this watch. Yeah. <laughs> and it was my lucky number. Sure. Um, and I helped this gentleman acquire this piece. And I told him, I said, do you know how special this watch is? And, you know... I went into it, and then he told me, he was like, it sounds like it's actually for you. <laughs> That's funny. And so I said, well, you know what? I hope you can sign it. And then I turned around and I said, how about I buy this watch off you? And so um, I purchased it from him, um, and I've been wearing it ever since. Um, it is my, um, you know, my... I like to use like you know your 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 sense when you talk about um like wearing like a gold dock so like when like wearing it in Florida sure, yeah. eating like key lime <laughs> pie my key, like my Key West watch it's your key yes it's your Key West <laughs> watch it's like you know and I took this watch out to my trip to Sarasota and I was like hanging out and like you know just bumming it on the beach and like doing all these things and I said man I really effing love this watch that's always <laughs> a great feeling I'm glad you got to enjoy that especially with pieces that are kind of like no frills yes you know what i'm saying doesn't you know get a lot of attention when you're you know if you really if you really love watches and you're wearing something that no one recognizes and 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 you can't take your eyes off of it you know this is this is meaningful this is something special here i'm glad that that you you enjoy it that way that's awesome thank you um my favorite purchase this year uh you know it's not one i had to think about i know what it is but it was a watch that came un- unexpected to me. Mm-hmm. So I, I bought a lot of watches in 2023. You brought a lot of watches. I bought, I bought quite a bit. Um, and, you know, what's funny was the, the way that this one came about also made it just it's, it's kind of a cool story. Uh, but we had the bungalow and, you know, everyone's in there chatting it up. I mean, almost 24 seven. And uh, we were talking about the time when me and. Ben visited AP House mm-hmm. uh, for an appointment to register our interest for some watches. To get told no, you can't have it. To get told no. <laughs> <laughs> but we, I, was, I was talking about, listen, you know, I went to AP House, had an amazing experience. Uh, no, we didn't get any watches. Doesn't look like we'll get any watches, but I had a good time. And you yes. know what? I still love the brand because they got, they've got genuine people. They have an amazing culture. Mm-hmm. And... I get the business. Yes. And as I'm saying that, uh, our friend John Tam chimes in and he's like, I got an AP I'm trying to sell. Wow. (laughs) And I was like, really interesting. And uh, he's like, let's take it to, you know, offline this chat. And he shoots me a picture and it happens to be um, one of my like absolute favorite references, Mm -hmm. the 14790 ST. Mm Mm-hmm. Uh, with the military dial, 36 millimeter. And I couldn't believe it. Mm-hmm. I was like, I was expecting him to show me anything. Yes. I was like, I, I, I don't know. Let me see. Yeah. Uh, and, and even when he said, I have something you might be interested in, 
I'm thinking I'll check out the picture and I'm going to I'm going to pass. Yes. And he sends the picture. And I'm like, yeah, I need to figure out how to get this watch. Yes. And um, honestly, it didn't take very much conversation. It was like we talked for me about five minutes and I was like, all right, I'm game. Let's do it. And uh, John lives in Miami. So he sends the watch to his dad. Yes. And I meet up with his dad and, and we settle everything. And um, I'm, I couldn't be happier with this watch. I wear it almost every day. I wore it all throughout the holidays. A few uh, wrist posts. Yeah, there was a few wrist posts uh, <laughs> with, with, with this piece. And you guys know I love vintage watches. I like pre-owned watches. I like watches that have a story. I love watches that look worn. It's got the right amount of like blemishes and scratches. It's not crazy. Mm -hmm. Looks really good. Great condition. Mm -hmm. And uh, no, really, really, really pleased with that watch. I did not anticipate getting that watch this year. And I got it for a great price. Yeah. John hooked it up. Yes. Uh, so shout out to you, John. Shout out to John. Uh, but that was that was my favorite watch purchase this year. Um, moving on. This is an interesting uh, topic. And many of these uh, these topics that we're going over tonight actually came from um, the Instagram page. Yes. Uh, we did a post asking people what they wanted to talk about uh, for our recap. And so we incorporated a couple of the themes that were expressed there. This was one that I thought was really interesting. And it was the most annoying release to you of the year. Uh, I'll start with I'll start with you. Yes. <laughs> um, funny enough, right? So this one is a good one because, um, as you guys know, 2022, I said my watch of the year was the um, turquoise OP. He, yes. Yeah, buggy. <laughs> that, yeah. that caused we're, we're a lot of debate. Yeah. It caused a lot of debate. <laughs> um, but I definitely stood on my square. You and, did. Um, and, and, and I held that one, right? I took all the And that watch year. is still pumping. It's still pumping. People are it's, still it's going still, after that. They're still after it. I have to say my most annoying watch of this year would have to be the Celebration Dial OP. Really? The reason why I say... I didn't expect to hear that. <laughs> the reason why I say that is because... And I mean, I could kind of go into more pieces that were introduced from Rolex, but... Um, so Rolex has got a couple of annoying pieces. I, I yes, this wow, one hundred percent. But I have to go with the Celebration OP because I felt like it was very, um, I want to say lazy on their part, mm. right? Um, I actually enjoyed the um, puzzle piece a little bit more than the um, the Celebration OP because of the simple fact that. At least the puzzle piece was a, was something a little bit different. You know, they went outside of their um, their norm of like doing the different date wheels, but like they just decided to paint over on this turquoise dial, which is already hot, which kind of like panders at clients that actually want the turquoise op. Sure. Um, I mean, we could go into the left hand GMT because we've like. I think the lefty was annoying. I, I, but I mean, but you know, we had our gripes I about think, the lefty. I think the, yeah, I mean, this is upside down watch. It's, it, yes, it's an upside down watch, <laughs> right? And I think that was like it's, the it's biggest. Upside down, period. That was like the biggest, like flip the finger yeah. to the consumer. It's like you, like you didn't even do it right. Like the date's on the wrong side. Yes. I so the, my thing with the celebration dial, I've seen it in person. Uh, it it photographs better. On Rolex's website, yes. On Rolex's website, it looks really, really cool. It's very like three D and graphic, and it looks I think like the watch looks better in person than it does in photos. But what I will say is, it makes no sense to me why this watch came out because the like the rumblings were, oh, we got rid of all the other colors because dials because the dials were so hard to make. Were, quote unquote, <laughs> yeah, they were really breaking. Is and you what put we every single every color, color. Every single color <laughs> on one dial. How does yes. that work? Yes, yes. It's one of those pieces that when you see it, you go, that's interesting. It doesn't really move you, but you want it because you feel like it's something that you should yeah, it's, have. It's that weird thing that if you're like a Rolex collector and you can get one, you should get one. You should get yes, one. Yes, you should get one. It's just like a lefty. If yeah. you're a Rolex collector, because it's if weird, you don't like the watch, you should get one. Yes. Yeah. So that's, that's interesting. Mine, um, I'll go into mine most annoying release or releases 
was every uh, freaking moonshine gold moon swatch. I just don't understand this thing anymore. It's like we went from something that was like that we waited in line to get and couldn't get. Yes. And now everybody gets it. Yes. Which I don't have a problem with. Yes. But you keep releasing the same version with a different seconds hand. And you know what's crazy? You never see people with it. Where the fuck I never is see them. Lot? Where are they going? Yeah, yeah. Where are they where going? Are they going? Do they yes. even exist? <laughs> I've never seen one. I've never seen no one, one with but the every, moonshine every seconds hand. On and you know what? You know what really grinds my gears about the moon swatch releases is that maybe I wouldn't feel a way about it if they were just like, "Hey guys, Friday, this is coming out," and they showed you a picture of it. But there always is a teaser. Yes. Why the teaser for the same fucking watch with a with different, a different second hand? Yes. <laughs> Ooh, I wonder which one it is. Is it a different color? No, it's the same <laughs> color with a snowflake second hand. Or yes. a strawberry second hand. Come the on. strawberry That's second so hand, that one got me. That one yeah, got me. Weird. It looks it, like it an acid tab. Yes. Like, <laughs> it, it was... <laughs> Uh, you yeah, know, it reminds me of like children's band aids. Yeah, it's with, weird. Like, all them weird patterns on it. Yeah, very That's strange. Yes. Uh, I, it, so now it it just kind of feels like a money grab. Yes. And uh, you know, swatch like, let's get it together. Also, speaking of swatch, let's talk about how the Blanc Pond swatch hype just immediately died. Oh, no, it's gone. No one cares. No yeah, one, yeah, no. No one cares. No one cares. Yeah. I didn't even try to get another one. Yeah. I, said, I still don't have one. Good. But they, is, is there rumors of the uh, them doing? It's definitely um, going to be some sort of a it's brigade. Probably be a brigade. Brigade. Yeah, it'll probably be a brigade type twenty. Yeah, as, that as, I could be yeah. into. Maybe. Yeah. What was your most annoying watch? So I'm a I'm a, I'm gonna say what it is, but there's an honorable mention involved. Okay. So it was just about every single Grand Seiko release this year. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> because limited to, edition. Yeah. To, to the moon swatch point, everything was limited edition, and they all look the exact same. Yes. The exact same. How do you dress in Japan, though? Because if they, all these seasons, <laughs> I don't get it. This is very true. Yeah, they <laughs> celebrate like 18 seasons. It's like, crazy. It's ridiculous. And the honorable mentions the Le Mans Daytona. Oh, of course. It's yeah. annoying. Yes. It's, everyone talks about it. No one ever sees one. Three of them are in the secondary market for like a quarter million dollars. But no one has one. It's Ridiculous. Well, we know someone that has one. We know so yeah, Ben Climber. Shout out to Shout the Richard Pyle alumni. <laughs> yeah. I just think it's odd though, because there's also all these rumblings about that watch too. It's like John yeah, Mayer now has a Le Mans too. Of course he does. does. He, he should have got the Ed first Sheeran. one. Yes, sure. Brady has one. Definitely. Ed Sheeran probably has one. Of course. Those are guys who probably deserve to have one though. Yeah. Yeah. But it's like again, rumblings with this watch. We're only making X amount, and then we're not. We're gonna get rid of it. Then there's gonna be another dial color maybe this year, but then. We don't know because the watch doesn't exist. No one's ever seen one in person. <laughs> yeah, I can't wait to actually see this thing. It's like, what, yes. like, what is the deal? Yes. Um, the rumor is, though, so I've heard is, so it's, it's the Le Mans 24. You know, it's, you know, sort of uh, paying tribute to the Le Mans 24 race, 24-hour race. Uh, and the rumor is, is that they're going to do 2,400 units total. Mm. And the swap dial colors, right? Yeah, the they'll white. do 1,200 in the black. Mm-hmm which is what they have now, they'll discontinue it and then do another 1,200 with the white dot. But the way it, is, it looks, it don't even seem like 1,200 of these things exist. Like, how long has this been going for? Yeah, I was supposed to be four years. Four years of each yeah. dial color? N- uh, no. Just so two years, years to, for the, the, the current one, mm. and then after that two years, they'll issue the white dial. But they and also, then run that for two years and then discontinue. But they also were saying that the watch wasn't supposed to be um, kind of considered limited, but it's a it's a bit of like off catalog as well, which is a, which well, is kind of weird. On the website, yes, yeah. it is on the website. Um, so not exactly off catalog, but kind of treated as off catalog because you're sorry. not going to yes. see it. I mean, this you, you'll never see this watch unless it's. You know, you're privileged enough to see it on someone's wrist that you know. Yes. Or it's offered to you. Yes. You're, you're not going to see this in a case walking into a Rolex shop and shop. It's yeah. just not going to happen. No. You're not going to be able to try this on. This There is no exhibition model <laughs> of the Le Mans Daytona. <laughs> Sorry to, to, yeah. to burst your bubble. Yes. Uh, but, you know, to anyone who has offered this watch, you should buy it. I know someone who was asked if he wanted it, and he said no. No way. And it's yeah. kind of yeah. breaking my heart. No way. <laughs> yes. He was like, yeah, I'm good. I was like, no. Um, we'll have him on the show this year, and we'll talk to him about it. Uh, I'm going to see if maybe maybe I can work some out with him, and he still gets it, and 
I'll just figure out how to get it off of him. I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'll sell every watch I have for Le Mans Daytona. Really? Absolutely. I'm good. Yeah. No, I'll get it back. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, but, you know, listen, annoying, sure. Uh, but what is interesting is it's the, the only modern Rolex I can think of where they went and made a movement exclusively for this watch. Very true. And that alone, uh, with the open case back and, and all the other attributes that yeah, it it's has. A full, it's also the only full white gold or full precious metal Daytona with a ceramic bezel. With a ceramic bezel. So it's still it's pretty special. Yes. Um, it would have been cool if they made like a special box for it or something. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Um, they made a special box for that hockey puck deep sea titanium. They definitely did. I remember that thing. Crazy. Oof. Oof. Um, all right. So moving on. Uh, this is a this is a cool one. Best new watch company of twenty twenty three. Mm-hmm. Um, I'll kick this one off. Uh, <clears throat> so I I do like this watch. Mm. I know it's it's kind of torn. Some people don't like it. Yes, this guy here, uh, <laughs> <laughs> and some people love it. Yeah. So the uh, the I think I forget what his exact position is. He's the product officer of Breitling. His name is uh, Sylvan uh, Berneron. I think that's how you pronounce it. Berneron or Berneron. And uh, he launched a brand after his namesake, Berneron. Yes. And uh, the watch is kind of cool. It's it's super limited. Uh, it's kind of got like some people compare it to the Cartier Crash. Mm-hmm. Because it's it's got like an interesting shape where it's like kind of twisted, yes. but the dial is too. So are the hands. Mm-hmm. Um, movement that he developed, um, and it's it's sort of like almost like Simone Brett. It's like a mm-hmm. a, um, a subscription based yes. uh, s- selling thing that he's doing, and so but apparently uh, you know super limited. They retail for about fifty five thousand dollars. And he's only able to produce some, somewhere in the neighborhood of like 25 units over the next 10 years. Mm. So, like, in gimmick. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I, I, that one slipped. Sorry. It's all good. It's all good. <laughs> um, but I, I, I actually really like this watch. I thought it was cool. I, I like the, uh, I think it's like the, the platinum version with the blue. With the blue. Yeah. I it's think that the one. Prettiest one. I think mm-hmm. it's the prettiest one. Mm-hmm. That thing is really, really cool. Um, I get what people say when they kind of compare it to a Cardi crash, just in terms of like the aesthetic, but it's clearly, it's not that. Yes. And I don't think that it's trying to be that, mm-hmm. though it might share a very similar spirit. Yes. Um, it's just a cool watch. And I think it's cool to see someone who's already inside the industry mm-hmm. kind of shake things up and say, hey, I've got ideas of my own that I want to express and I'm going to deliver you this. And I think that's the reason why I think it's like really cool as well is because the work that he's doing at Breitling couldn't be so far, mm. you know, further removed from what he's doing with this brand that he's developed. 100%. And it's, it's just really, really interesting. And I think there's a, a, a larger conversation to be had there that we can talk about uh, some other time in terms of the influence uh, that designers can have uh, or product people can have within some of these watch brands. Yes. Um, I'm curious, what was uh, was your favorite watch company? Uh, brand new, new watch company. New year? watch brand. Uh, I was in the picks and Mon Brett. Okay. For sure. Yes. Um, I, with, I, with, some, with some caveats, though. Okay. I'm not Talk gonna, about uh, it. I'm not going to say there aren't caveats. <laughs> um, I just, I want to see, I, I know first watch came out it was amazing it was a banger people are saying very pretty people, yeah. yeah super pretty people saying he lost money on it i kind of believe it it's mm. just with the finishings and all that stuff they actually did like concave blued screws yeah but like mm. that's such attention to detail mm-hmm. like so expensive to do it's like why would anyone do it but he did it mm. um i just don't want to see him turn into a one-trick pony yes there's always that fear right especially yeah. when you when your first piece is like such a banger and such a hit. Yeah, it's like how do I not keep this going? How do I yeah, how do I not keep this going? How do I not do the same thing? And it's that's a very like weird position to be in because 
there's two ways you can go that are both the wrong way, mm -hmm. right? You can go and try to recreate what you just did. Or you can do too much. Or you can do too much and go so far yeah. away from what you just did that you, you lose completely lose people because yeah. they're like, this yeah. doesn't feel like yeah. what I know and, and, to be you. And it's like, again, it's like one of those small, like, super like niche boutique watch brands, right? Where it's like, there's 20 of them that exist, the 20 guys that have them all know each other, they all yeah. hang out. Like, mm -hmm. you would think there's a thousand of these watches out there because it's all over Instagram. But it's just because these people are so involved in the community that they yes. want to show this thing off because it's worth it. Yep. Yeah. So, I mean, that's partly what's good about it. I just like, we need to see complications eventually. Mm -hmm. This stuff still needs to be legible. So like the whole dragon scale dial thing. Yeah. Amazing. But that can't be part of the identity of you do especially complicated watches the shit's hard to read it's hard right. to read now in my opinion yes yeah. and i know all the guys that wear them are people who are actually like i'm going to use my watch to tell time it's yes. hard to tell time on that yes yeah. <laughs> the one that he made i think it's a one-off that's like sapphire and diamond bezel yeah oh yeah Banger. that was beautiful like more crazy like custom projects like that like mm. one offs for people i think would be amazing if he could do a program maybe three or four of those a year on top of producing 20 other pieces a year yeah because yeah. how many did he make this year i think, I he, think made he made like, 20. i think it was 20? only 20 plus the one is gem set yeah yeah which is part of this whole reason that bothers me with this burner on gimmick you only make <laughs> 20 watches in 10 years <laughs> Fuck out of here yeah yeah let him eat yeah what about you, sir? No, I, I definitely want to piggyback on, you know, the Simone Brett piece, right? The, um, the what is it, Chronomet uh, Artisan, right? Mm -hmm. the, the piece, the single piece, right? Um, when I seen it, right, aesthetically is great. But to Ben's point, it is not, it's not really legible. Yeah. But I think for what the piece is, it's one of those pieces that, like, if you own it, you aren't really telling time with it. Mm. Yeah, you also you got you got to respect it too. You, you, it's just a it, bang. It's and 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 the thing is that it's held in a very very high regard, right? And I think it is one of those like homage pieces where you can see the DNA of like you know a contemporary look of like a MBNF, but then having like this. Well, and I think he worked for MBNF. He, he, yes, time so too, he works yeah. for MBNF. Um, there's this prestigiousness of like Jorn, right? Yeah. Like, um, this, is, this is a legit, like a real watch. It is yeah, a real, yeah. like, like it's, finishing it's, it's through and through. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. No, like, it's expensive. <laughs> yes. But there's no arguing. You're getting your money's worth in. Oh, 100%. And with that, right, when you look at the piece from, you know, from the dial to um, the overall movement, right, from the exhibition case back and you, you know, you, you see all these like fancy bells and whistles, like it makes sense why this exists. Yeah, it's a, it's a beautiful, beautiful piece. We got the opportunity to see it at GPHG. Mm -hmm. um, also our friend James. Yeah. Uh, Waitlist owns one. Yes. And I think I saw it on James's wrist first, and I was like, what the hell is that? Yes. And then just a couple of days later, I saw it at GPHG. It's a beautiful, beautiful piece. Um, honestly, it was one of my, at the last, when we were with Ben Clymer, I said it was Watch of the Year. Yes. Um, and I still kind of feel that way just in terms of, like, beauty. Yes. Um, you know, there's a couple of watches of the year. I have another one that we'll, we'll talk about Later today, I'm pushing P. Yes. Pushing uh, P. <laughs> Not the one you think, though. Yeah. Yes. Um, but beautiful, beautiful piece. Um, okay. Uh, this was an interesting one. This is a fun one. Best guest watch of the year on the show. Uh, ben, I'll let you kick this one Tristan's off. Tristan's Tank Century with yeah. the custom bracelet, hands down. That was pretty fire. That's easily the best watch that was shown. I yeah. can agree. That was that was a beautiful beautiful piece. I would agree that that was probably the best watch that we had on the show in 2023. Uh, especially the fact that like when you see the the uh, the actual picture mm -hmm. of that watch, I mean it's a beautiful watch. You go, what the hell is that? 100%. And then the effort that Tristan went through uh, to actually get that made. Yeah, mm -hmm. that bracelet. Yeah, and right. rest in peace to Harry Fain too. Yeah, R.I.P. to Harry Fain. Like Harry Fain is. Year is the gentleman who Tristan would work with to get some of these like really yeah, rare these, and basically crazy all his crazy cars yeah, came from them. pretty much yeah. yeah and uh who recently passed yeah uh, uh want to say our thoughts are with Tristan on that I know you know he meant a great deal to him because it wasn't only someone who he was purchasing watches uh with I know he was developing an education 
uh, through Harry Fane, and they had become friends as well. Yes. Um, I have an honorable mention. Um, I thought one of the most interesting watches that we had on the show this year uh, via guest was Alex Todd's Purnell. Push and yeah. P. And um, the reason why is I, I wouldn't – that's not a watch you would expect Alex Todd to come through with. Yes. Yeah. That was a curveball, and I appreciated so much that he actually did that because I think that was his subtle way of yeah, he like – he knew what he was doing. He knew what he was doing. That was his subtle way of flexing like – no, I'm a real watch guy. <laughs> yes. You yes. know, and uh, yes. and that it was a cool watch. It's not something that you get to see. Yes. Very often. Yes. If at all. Um, it's it's so not pedestrian mm-hmm. of a watch. And it costs some major coin. You're talking about it's like a two hundred and fifty, yeah. three hundred thousand dollar watch. Yes. You know, to spend that kind of money on a watch that nobody really wants, mm-hmm. you gotta really love watches. So yes. shout out to Alex Todd. Yes. And I thought it was a cool piece, you yes. know, and I and I can see just knowing like his appreciation for brands like Richard Mill, I can kind of see why he appreciates a brand like Parnell. Yes. Not that they're the same, but there is sort of like a similar spirit in their approach to, to watchmaking, you know, doing stuff that's also like do something no one does, right? Yeah. Double, triple, triple axis, axis turbions. turbions, like yeah, crazy. It is nuts. You need a key to to wind it yeah, up. Yeah, you it's need so an automatic tight. winder. To, yeah. To do it. Uh, but shout out to him. I thought that was a really cool piece. Yeah. Uh, what about you? Um, I mean, I want to definitely give a a, a, a honorary mention as well. Is um, you know, uh, Fremstar coming in uh, Fremstar fashion. The Master Avenger. The Master Avenger. Um, I mean, this guy showed up with a Louis Vuitton yeah. case <laughs> full of heat. Yeah, the table was on fire. Yeah, um, that was a lot. It, it, that was that was really enjoyable. You know, for the pieces that obviously, like, I mean, you're talking about someone that owns like the most coveted paddocks in the world. I mean, he has Man, a celestial. Like a week at this point. I, I mean, mean, like, it's like average, every wild. single post, he's like, he's, he's, he's got, he got them little scissors. He's out. got the scissors. He's <laughs> like, he's cutting a new, you know, he's cutting a new seal off a paddock. But then yeah, he just got a 52, a uh, 5326, I think. Yes. Yeah. And in that, right. But at the same time, while he does have these pieces, he also was able to pull out watches that had, you know, um, sentiment to him, mm-hmm. right? And was able to speak to them. Yeah, he has a he has a, a he has a really wide variety of uh, of, of watches. You talking about someone who, in the same box, he had a yellow gold Black Bay fifty eight. Yes, and then a fifty two seventy, uh, Patek Philippe. Yeah, like man loves watches. Yeah, he's, Fred, he's, what, he's what, what if like what if Frederick Constant? I know. Patek, and then the next day it's a sterling silver Black Bay fifty eight. Yes, yes, <laughs> which is which is which is very. Which is something that I find to be very impressive, right? Because, you know, we do collect these watches for the love of the sport. And, of course, you know, it's good when, you know, you can pull up with a, you know, a crazy piece, right? And shoot from the half court and do your Steph Curry shimmy, right? Yeah, exactly. (laughs) Um, And he's someone that can do that. But then he can also come with something that, you know, the common person can purchase or may wear yeah right and i found that to be very very impressive and i and i find him to be a true watch enthusiast no definitely true watch enthusiast really cool guy he actually oftentimes helps people get watches too yes uh there was a gentleman that i i helped him with uh acquire a date just for his wedding uh and um he's always kind of looking out for for watch people and and his buddies and just a good dude yes uh shout out to him that was a really really cool episode if you haven't seen that Definitely go back out in, uh, to our catalog and check that out. Uh, the episode we did with Fremstar last year, that was a good one. Yes. Okay. A uh, couple left. I think this one um, is right on time. Biggest surprises of 2023. Um, I'm going to say for me, um, there was a couple of things that happened last year that was really really shocking um i'm gonna start with the rolex bucra acquisition <laughs> yeah that was, that was big that was big that's that was big. probably the biggest surprise of 2023 that was big 
Um, and as the year has progressed, um, my views have kind of transformed on it. Mm -hmm. And, uh, but I still, I think eventually, I think Rolex is going to go boutique only. I, I can agree. I, I, I think so. And even when I was thinking about like, um, I'm not saying that this is obviously not happening next year, but, uh, and w you know, this will actually relate to one of my 2024 predictions. Uh, so I won't go crazy right now. We'll come back to it. But I think, uh, 2024 is going to reveal what their true motivations are, mm -hmm. uh, going forward. Mm -hmm. I understand. And I recognize their motivations for acquiring Bukhara were not necessarily to go boutique exclusive, but to prevent uh, larger authorized dealers from having the lion's share of their allocation mm -hmm. and to protect uh, the Bukhara brand um, because there's a lot of history between Rolex and, and, and Bukhara. I just thought about that too. Bukhara makes their own watches. Yes, they so do. The Carl Bukhara watch. Technically... Their Rolex, Rolex now now produces Carl, Carl Bucher 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 watches. watches. That's on top of now owning Bucher, they're now just Rolex is a distributor. You can put it right there next to Tudor Cartier. Yeah. yeah, every brand Bucher sells, right? I seen Bucher had a um. They had that mini repeater piece. Bucher watch. They, they make Bucher some crazy custom stuff. Watches. You yeah. walk in the yeah. and say, "Hey, I want one made," and they say, "Okay, yeah. what do you want? This is how much it's going to cost. This is how much? This is how long it's going to take?" Yeah. Which Just is crazy. very, very interesting. Shout out to Dave Lafferty. He has like a, a really cool uh, Carl of Bucro watch. Mm -hmm. Yeah, with a peripheral rotor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fire. It's <laughs> insane. <laughs> That's nuts. Uh, but yeah, it's you can do all too. kinds of stuff. Nice. And I, I happen to think they make really cool watches. Wasn't there one that they did for Only Watch? Yeah. It was like that murdered out piece i think and then the they make one, on. yeah and then they make one too that's like obviously it's a buker watch you can buy a buker but it's like the buker or blue they did it yes for like that's a like yes, their thing. yes that's they the do thing. that for like different brands as mm -hmm. well mm -hmm. yeah um did you guys have any big surprises yeah i actually just double checked my phone to make sure i got the date right that it actually was in 2023 on december 29th rolex decided to release a 36 millimeter day date for the vienna philharmonic yeah, that with was a, a surprise. green enamel dial that has like a cello or That's, on it. And it's yeah. kind of gorgeous. Where the hell did that come from? I don't know. Yeah, that was a surprise. That was yep. a surprise. That was a good surprise. That watch yeah, was Yeah, awesome. it was fire, actually. Yeah. yeah. And so now, but those are made exclusively for... For the Vienna Philharmonic. That's awesome. The thing is, who gets one? Because like, there's people in the Vienna Philharmonic that just come and go, right? It's, yeah. like, a, it's like being in a band. There's people who are on contracts, people who've been there for 40 years. Like, mm -hmm. maybe, what if you retire? Do you get one? Like, it's probably like, maybe it's the kind of thing, it's probably like a Super Bowl ring. Probably, Pro right? Yeah. yeah. Like, if you work for the organization, you can apply for one. Yeah. Yeah, you just gotta get approved to get one. You just one. gotta get approved. Yeah. That's dope. What gotta have you done for us to get this one? Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> right. What have you done for us lately? Um, uh, I think, I'll give a, I'll give an honorary mention, right? Because I like... Um, the way that the industry is moving with um i think brands that are a little bit more um accessible okay um when you think of like citizen group right mm -hmm. and them just opening their boutique on fifth avenue yes which we visited recently that was that was really really cool that that to me was a big surprise only because um I think it kind of like put things into perspective that these guys are actually listening, right? Mm -hmm. Citizen group, they are working with collectors groups. They're working with, um, you know, prominent pop culture like figures, right? Yeah, we were there. We attended their grand opening um, for a watch that they had just released with Mark Anthony. Which like, you know, when you think about it, like Mark Anthony is probably like one of the biggest, you know, pop stars right because you can't really put him in a genre this guy just like you know speaks to so many different cultures i saw, I saw the photos of him at the event and he was like a Puerto Rican <laughs> stevie wonder you know? like, <laughs> yes what? yes yeah. i mean this guy is like i mean this guy was like walking on air and it was so hard to kind of like get to him like he was very personable right and you could say hi hello and speak to him but like it was it was kind of like this thing like this i mean this is mark anthony it, it was it was huge and for citizen to kind of um you know do this big thing and surround 
um, it around Mark Anthony with this grand opening because their price points, right, vary. You're talking about, you know, citizen watches being from 500 to like, you know, Frederick Constance being, you know, high, like mm -hmm. five figures. Yeah. Some can even supersede that, right? And, um, you know, we spoke about, you know, the Frederick Constant piece that was introduced um, for GPHG, right? Mm -hmm. And, you know, what they kind of contribute, um, I found it to be very impressive um, for what Citizen Group has been doing um, this year, kind of like keeping their finger on the pulse. Yeah, no, I thought on, it was fantastic. Things, yeah. It was a great event. Uh, the showroom is beautiful. Yes. So in the Citizen Group showroom, uh, and we say Citizen Group because they own many other brands yes. and, and they're all within that house in that one building, but you've got Citizen on the first floor. Yes. Uh, and then you move up and there was the Mark Anthony collection, which is with Belova. Mm -hmm. Kind of like, they kind of put it together like a museum. So yes. there was like his Grammys and some awards and photos there. Um, and then you walk upstairs again. Now you're in like a proper Belova showroom. Mm -hmm. And as you make your way to the back, they also have Frederic Constant and um, Alpina. Yes. Uh, but what I will say is, um, and we, we will be doing some stuff with citizen this year as, as, as well. Mm -hmm. Um, so look out for that. Uh, we'll actually be doing a live taping at the new store, yes. um, this year. Uh, but the, the, what I really, really enjoyed too was all of the product. Mm -hmm. Uh, that was a, a pleasant surprise. Citizen isn't a brand that I've had a lot of experience with, mm -hmm. um, more so Belova, um, but they had some beautiful watches. There they was did. one watch I remember in particular, I have to see if I can get a photo of it, but it, re it looked like a Calatrava and it was tight. Yeah. Like even the strap that they had on it was kind of dope. The strap reminded me of like the strap that they use on the Kodo. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But the watch, uh, looked like it was like shaped like a collar. It was like very like had the spirit of like a Patek Calatrava, and it was just a beautiful timepiece. Mm -hmm. um, so no shout out to Citizen. Yes, I think uh, another big surprise, if I can you know insert an honorable mention, was the return of Universal Geneve. Yes, uh, acquired uh, by Breitling. By Breitling. <laughs> I did not Bungalow see that went coming. After that happened. Yes. I did not see that coming. Very, very interesting. I'm glad that it's happening. Yes. I'm very curious what that looks like. The price of pre Breitling pole riders just went up. Yeah. Yes. Damn sure. Yeah. Um, it, I'm, I'm curious how soon they'll be able to deliver something. Mm -hmm. uh, will we see a new watch next year? Try compacts. That would, I, I'm for it. That's yeah. what everybody's waiting for. Yes. I'm for it. Yes. Um, so I don't know. This is that was, but that was that was a nice surprise to cap off the year with, mm -hmm. um, and one that could have a, a huge positive uh, impact on Breitling in general. Um, I, I hope that Breitling goes into it really, uh, you know, paying honor to what Universal Geneve is and, and how much it means to people. Mm -hmm. But I also hope that along this journey, they take some learnings for themselves about how to engage the watch community, mm -hmm. uh, understanding what their clients actually want. Mm -hmm. um, because I think they, as a brand, they've, they've got a lot of work to do. Yes. Um, I think I think with the Breitling and Universal Geneve's and go to Zenith route, how they did yeah. all those re-editions on like uh, the El Primeros. Listen, I'm not mad at that. Yeah. I mean, you know, you can get some of those pieces now vintage, but they cost an arm and a leg. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, so if Evil you need a re-edition, sign me up. Yeah. If they can be had for a fraction of, of the prices that they're reselling for now, I'm on board. Yes. Um, okay. What everyone wants to know, your watch of the year. Yes. Who wants to take this one first? Pregnant pause. Sound off so fast. I feel, like, I feel like if you've heard just be talk throughout the season, you know what I'm gonna pick. <laughs> uh, yeah, we know it's a pattern. Yeah, easy. Uh, and I know which one. Yeah. So why don't you kick it All off right, first? Fifty-three, sixteen dash fifty. Yeah, that you've been consistent since yeah. Watches and Wonders. Yep. This My is your watch. My favorite Patek of all time was a fifty-two oh eight. This easily dethroned it. 
It's a beautiful watch. Yeah, it's like a contemporary 5208. There's yeah. no like mono pusher chrono, but it's fine. You get a retro grab perpetual mm -hmm. instantaneous door beyond smoked sapphire dial. Smoked sapphire dial, I think, was just basically like the an open best one. touch. Like it's, yeah. the, the strap is young, right? Mm -hmm. For that young millionaire out there that wants a minute repeated, there you go. Something to cater to you. Yeah. A little Kevlar strap. Sign me up. And it's platinum. You get a diamond in the case. Yes. If Fire. you know, you know. If you know, yes. yes. If you know, you know. Yeah. Um, I'm, I, I also am very consistent. Um, I'm, I'm pushing a different kind of P though. <laughs> uh, but the ultra thin Piaget oh Polo God. Perpetual. Yes. <laughs> I love this watch <laughs> with like that emerald color dial. That thing is a smoke show, man. Yes. It's a gorgeous watch. Yes. It's a, it's gorgeous. Perpetual calendar, that color dial, that mm. thin. Yes. Crazy. I can agree. Crazy. And to be honest, after seeing him in person, he's going to crucify me for this. Don't say I know what you're going to say. kind of prefer it to an Aquanaut. Yeah. Woo! Just saying. Yeah, Looks better than the... No, the, the Yes, nope. it does. Nope. The freaking nope. constant shaking paddock nope. Nope. Aquanaut. That nope. thing is nope. trash. It's not. You wasn't talking all that spicy until you tried on that PSJ, so I don't want to hear that. No, I was you talking spicy about that watch. No, no you it wasn't. Yes, you were. It looks like an upside-down yes, clown. It looks like yes, the Pringles were. guy. You didn't say that. Somebody pointed it out after you tried on the PSJ. Yes. Piaget is fire. Mm, beautiful. Nah. Right yeah, proportions, dollars laid look, out I correctly. I like Piaget as a brand. Like, I love Piaget. Because, I mean, Mike Tyson, y'all know I love that story. I love yes. telling that story. <laughs> I have no beef with Piaget. It's this fun. watch is a dud. No, yes. oh, it's, it's not a, a dud. dud. Whatever. It's a dud. I love it. What about you? Um, I mean, I still have to go with the um, the Chronomet, um the Chronometer, sorry, um, Artisan the, from... Um, Simone Brett, right? Um, we spoke about it. We kind of gave our love and appreciation for the watch, and we had a bit of big gripes. But, like, um, I think that piece was very, very interesting to me because it's a new watch brand, right? Yes. Um, and for 2023, I think in the industry in general, right, there hasn't been anything new to shake things up. Mm. It's been the same key players doing the same key things, right? And um, yes, those things are great, but then you have like a younger generation, right? Because there was a time where we believed that um, watchmaking was dead, mm -hmm. right? And the, the idea of, you know, let's say you take a brand like Patek, we've been able to visit the Stern building and we've seen, you know, the watchmakers and they don't look like the traditional watchmakers that you would think, right? Mm -hmm. You have like, so many different backgrounds, so many ethnicities. Somebody's got purple hair, somebody's got like blonde hair, somebody's like tall, somebody's short, somebody's got, you know, all of these things, like so many different walks of life. And so it kind of breathes new breath into the industry mm. for you to say, okay, maybe we're not moving backwards, we're actually pushing forward. Mm. Um, and, you know, we had Ben Clymer, um on the show. Shout out to Ben. And, you know, he spoke about the piece and he um, he really enjoyed it. And, of course, you know, to some of our comments about it, right, we thought it was like a bit gimmicky, right? Um, but then when you're able to handle it and hold it, like you said, it's like, oh, this is actually as good as, you know, it's been um, framed to be. Right. Um and I find it to be one of those like Mona Lisa's, right? When you look at the Mona Lisa, it's Ooh. like, you know, everybody's thinking like, oh, what is the hype behind this? But then when you see it, you're like, oh, okay, I get it. It like I mean, time, it fits in yeah. time. No, time and time. Time will tell. You know, the interesting thing with Simone Brett is, you know, to 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 your point and to Ben's point is, he caught a hit. Yes. Right. Um, where do you go from here? And in addition to that, is this watch just the flavor of the month? Yes. Or, you know, does this particular piece have staying power in terms of like how long will people be actually talking about mm. this specific piece? Yeah. Um, so it'll be interesting to see. Um, almost uh, we're, we're wrapping up in a little bit, but one of the things I wanted to uh, to get to is give a chance to make some predictions. 2024. Yes. 
if there was anything that you would uh, put your money on happening next year, what is it? Well, this year now. We're in 2024. Mm -hmm. What is it? I think that um, watch brands are going to listen to the prominent voices in the industry Mm. more. They're going to have to. Um, We've seen it in 23. Um, and there was a bit of um, some steam behind it, right? Mm-hmm. But I think 2024, um, these guys are going to add the coal. Okay. And the train is going to push forward. I hope so. I mean, that would be great. They need to. Um, mines is sort of twofold. Um, I think you're going to see uh, the secondary market continue to bleed. And take a hit, particularly on Rolex. Mm-hmm. Um, I think Rolex prices are going to continue to fall greatly. And, and why so? Uh, and so I'm glad you asked that. I think a people are tired of not being able to get what they want. Yes. Uh, B those who have had a good year had a really good year and got everything that they want. Yes. And there's nothing left for them to get. I think as a result. In terms of influence, I think you're going to see way more celebrities this year starting to wear uh, either more independent brands. Mm -hmm. And by independent, I know there are a number of brands that are very popular that are independent. But I mean, like, sort of like the rise of the independent brands, like the brands that are not so known. Yes. But also, I think you'll start to see some of the guys who, you know, have dibbled and dabbled in Rolex over the last few years start to really get interested in watches and move towards uh, more, you know, uh, elite brands. Mm-hmm. Brands like Paddock, brands like F.P. Journe, mm-hmm. and, and continue to move up from there, maybe even to an mb and 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 things like that. Mm-hmm. Um, I was saying before regarding the biggest surprises, uh, Rolex's acquisition, I think as a result of this year, mm-hmm. And continue to see the secondary market prices bottoming out. Rolex will start to. You'll start to hear murmurings more publicly about them moving forward with the idea of opening their own boutiques. Because I see the only way to actually control that secondary market price, which, you know, in 2023 and 2022, they potentially claim that you know we don't care about aftermarket prices you're going to be in a position in 2024 uh, where you're going to have to. Yes. I think they already set themselves up for that with the launch of CPO. I think you're right. But, um, I think it's but I think, think you're going to start to that. see, it's going to, it's going to be a little m- more obvious, mm-hmm. I think, because it's going to be harder for authorized dealers to move watches. Mm-hmm. Uh, we've already seen that. There are more and more uh, watches that were in demand a year ago hitting the cases and they're able to be purchased on the spot. Mm-hmm. Uh, something no one has experienced for a while. Yes. Um, so 2024, I think, is going to be is going to be interesting. So that's my prediction. That's what I got. I'm going to piggyback on some of the stuff you said, but I think with the secondary market, especially Rolex, I think the opposite is going to happen. I think you think it's going to go back up. Yeah. Mm. Uh, I think we're at the part of the cycle. I mean, trends, especially market trends, are definitely cyclical. Uh, I think 2024 is going to be the year where they start to creep up. Slowly. I think the only way that happens is if there's another crypto bull run like everyone well, is talking I about. I mean, election year, I think stuff's going to happen in the economy. It might get more pump in the economy. And I think CPO so is actually going to drive how the How about this? Market. What about a scenario? Because I also consider this. Uh, if all that happens... Mm-hmm. Let's say there's a crazy crypto bull run. Mm. I think crypto, Bitcoin's at like 40000 yeah. change now, right? Yeah. So it's come up like eight to $10,000 in the last few months. Uh, some people are saying it's going to hit 100 k this year, 2024. Mm. Mm. Believe when I see it. Uh, but let's say it did. I think you will see that spike, but I think it's going to be incredibly violent. Yeah. And the reason why I say that is I think it's going to spike all the way up. And then come crashing down. Well, that's kind of what happened in the last two years. I think it'll be faster. Sure. I'm talking about like 
Get like, in. Like a month. Get out. Like within a month. Yeah. <laughs> mm. Like people are like yeah. going to start making wild money. Then yeah. Stop. I think it's going to be like. Yeah, uh, I think something What was the thing? I think it's going to be like GameStop. GameStop stock? Yeah. It'll be like GameStop. And Diamond NFTs? hands. Yeah. <laughs> so I think. So so just talking about Rolex specifically. I think what would happen is. And I can see it happening now. Just because we had this conversation. The bungalow like two days ago. Mm-hmm. Someone was looking at buying. It was Jazz actually. He was looking at buying a, a Coke GMT. Okay. And he's like, I'm really finding them online, like between 11 to at the very top 13. And they're on a CPO between 15 to 17. Crazy. If I know what I'm doing, why would I buy a CPO watch? Like, I don't care. Yeah. Like, if I could say 5K, that's another watch. Absolutely. Why would I get it from CPO? Mm-hmm. So I think Rolex CPO. Is setting up the secondary market in terms of all these dealers, 47th Street, eBay, who Eric wins, whoever you are. If you have this product and it's priced well, you're going to move it way faster than an authorized dealer or CPO will. Yes. Sure. Just because especially people are going to start doing research, which is what happened and why this all boomed to begin with. Mm-hmm. And that secondary market is going to spike again. Yeah. I think Cartier vintage secondary market is going to keep going up. And so up now and up. The, so this is a different conversation. So. I, cause when I talk vintage, I don't really look at vintage as like secondary market. Well, was, I was going to hit on, but I, with Cardi as I like do believe prices. to your point, I think, I think vintage is going to see vintage is already rising. Yeah. again. You're starting to see kind of bubble up. Vintage slowly. has never, ever gone down. The trend. No, it's actually, it's always only it's gone always up. Yes. Yes. Or gone up. It yes. is. Like I remember like, what, let's say 2017, 2018, people were going ape shit over bubble back Rolexes. Yeah. And like, who's buying that anymore? <laughs> but if you bought one at the quote unquote peak of a bubble back Rolex, you probably bought one for like thirty five hundred dollars. Sure. You getting thirty five hundred dollars out of it still. Yeah. Yes. If you bought like let's say this GMT, you paid thirteen grand for it. You making money on this right now. Let's be honest. Yeah. Especially when you have an insert like this. Mm-hmm. So, I don't think that's ever going to change. Now. CPO is actually just going to increase that. I think it's going to happen faster. To your point, I think vintage. You'll start to see vintage kind of bubble. A lot yeah, more like quickly but like real in twenty twenty four. I think what's yeah. going to happen to vintage is what happened the last three years with just modern pre owned Rolex. Yeah, I can mm. see that. How that secondary market just boomed. That's It'll spike. Happen vintage. It's going to mm-hmm. spike. Mm-hmm. And the thing is, like we said, it's not going to come down. No, it's going to spike and then valley mm-hmm. and then peak again and then valley is going to do that consistently. For as long as people want to buy watches, I would agree with that. And mm. when it comes to auction prices, I think Cartier is eventually gonna. I mean, they're getting up there. There's been some pretty. Well, as more people things. become educated. Yeah, and Cartier seems to be like everyone's vintage starter watch now. Yeah, that's very interesting. That is in in a way. Yeah. Um, you can blame Mike Noble for that. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to Mike. Um, so uh, we'll end with this last question. Uh. On a more optimistic note, what are you looking forward to in watches in 2024? And it could be anything, whether it's, you know, a brand, a release, uh, whatever. I just want all these brands to really realize and keep realizing like they did the last year and a half or so that their target audience is definitely different now. I It's definitely uh, younger, it's more eclectic. I hope they keep pumping out product that appeals to them. I think Cartier did a good job. Like they did those colorful tanks last uh, 2022. Yeah. 2023, Perfect. they brought them back in gold. Mm-hmm. Still did well. Yeah. Um, I think, I mean, even Rolex with the celebration dial. Sure, say what you want. It's unobtainable, whatever, whatever, whatever. It's definitely for a younger audience or that real Rolex collector who's an enthusiast. Um, Patek with the 6007Gs this year. That's definitely a young man's. I love problem. that. I, I was a big fan of that. There's like yeah. the fifty two twenty six or fifty three twenty six. That's all a young man's watch. Mm-hmm. I hope they keep that going, especially with highly complicated pieces. They did a really good job at taking pieces that would be seen as like kind of an older gentleman's piece and making them more youthful. Oh yeah, even the fifty two twenty four. I fell in love with. It. I thought that oh, watch yeah. was gorgeous. It was a twenty four hour dial. Yeah, yeah. crazy. Um, Again, just to shout out Cartier again, I want to see what I would like for them to do is all this crazy CPCP stuff they've been launching, like mm. these tank normal and bracelet, and make that eventually available to everybody. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Like those would bang if someone could just buy one. Buy it. Yeah. You can't. 
Yeah, I, I get watches on wrist. Yeah. Like, that you should be the motto for wrist. 2024. Omega needs to chill again with all this stupid limited edition stuff. So does Grand <laughs> Seiko. Please relax. Yeah. Uh, I think they need to go back to the drawing board in terms of just design. Mm. They've always been great at design. And I think they just, like, everything just looks the same now. Yeah. They have so much heritage that they're not using still. They keep going back to, to nature. We're over it. Yeah. Yeah. I don't get it. Um, there's a release I'm looking forward to uh, that comes out in January. Uh, it's a Seiko um, celebrating the 100th anniversary of Seiko, which is funny because um, it's really not the 100th anniversary of Seiko. Yeah. But it's the 100th anniversary of them putting Seiko on, on a dial. dial. Yeah. Yes. And it's the, the I'm going to butcher the name, the Kintari... Hattori, I think it is, um, but but it's a it's a reproduction of a watch that they did um, back then, and uh, it had I think on the original, it was it had it had a sub seconds at six o'clock, I think I want to say it was a twenty four hour clock on the original, mm -hmm. and on the new one it's a sub seconds uh, dial at six o'clock. Mm -hmm. Um, Breguet numerals, um, looks, it's got a very like Calatrava kind the of spirit to it. Sick. The hands are gorgeous. And blue steel. Yeah. Um, it's just a, it's a beautiful watch yeah. and uh, reasonably priced. I think it's limited to a thousand pieces. Mm -hmm. Comes out this month. We'll share pictures. I'm a really big fan. Um, that is a, I'm adding that to my collection in 2024. That's a watch I'm going after. I like it a lot. Yeah. Really, really nice. Uh, what are you looking forward to, sir? 2024, I'm looking forward to more brand ambassadorships. I'm looking for watch brands to actually listen to the community, mm -hmm. right? And to be able to um, bridge the gap with um, these brands and the end consumer. Um, we've seen a little bit of it with... Um, brands like we refer to Citizen, um, uh, you know, there was a point in time, right, where like Grand Seiko kind of got it, right, and we gave them their flowers for it because they listened to the community, especially when they introduced like GS9. Like it always existed, but like for them to like bring it down to like Brooklyn and for us to be able to attend those events, right, and to kind of feel like, you know, you know the CEOs, the VPs, or um, the executive side of the business, right? As being an end consumer, mm -hmm. um, I think there's a lot of value proposition in investing in a brand. If you know, if you know, you know, Edward Malon, like by like if he knows you by first name mm, sure you know i think there's a value proposition in that and i'm looking forward to more brands kind of like stepping off their like throne mm. or high horse to come down to you know the common folk and actually you know want to immerse themselves in the community yeah, i think that's a great point the the um high connectivity should be the theme as the watch industry uh, the watch community grows, it should feel smaller. Yes. And there's an art form to achieving that, and I hope they understand that, and I hope that's one of their, their goals for 2024 because for many brands... Um, they need that, it. <laughs> that, that, that would be the determining factor, you know, to see where they stand in 2025 because yes. um, anybody can get this work. And on that note... <laughs> Uh, and maybe that's the name of the episode. Anybody can get this work. I yes, like that. I like that. 2024. Uh, you guys know where to find us. Uh, wristcheckpod.com. We're on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, YouTube, Amazon Music, Google Podcasts, uh, The Works. Yeah. Uh, we still have some of our Wolf travel cases available yes. on the dot-com site. Uh, the Shuttle is still on sale. Uh, almost sold out. Mm -hmm. uh, you can also grab that on the Wind Up shop uh, if you're friends of Worn and Wound and want to support there. And Happy New Year. We'll see you next week. Deuces. Peace.